Welcome to the Drama Teacher Podcast brought to you by Theatre Folk, the Drama Teacher Resource Company. I'm Lindsay Price. Hello. I hope you're well. Thanks for listening. This is episode 208, 208, and you can find any links to this episode in the show notes, which are at theaterfolk.com forward slash episode 208. Okay, today we've got a production case study. Oh, production case studies are some of my favorite, favorite episodes. I hope you like them too. I hope we like them. But uh, I like them because I love learning the how and the why behind a production. And this particular conversation is a real treat. So we're talking musicals today. One particular musical, Your Good Man, Charlie Brown. And our guest today had quite the experience with the show. So little teaser for you. Let's find out why. I'll see you on the other side. Everybody, welcome to the podcast. I am uh, talking with uh, Becca Schneider. Hello, Becca. Hey there. Uh, so, first of all, uh, tell everyone where in the world you are. You're in an extra special place. I am in Suwon, South Korea. So, this is pretty awesome because it's uh, so I'm doing this recording, which will mean nothing to you much later in the time when this gets posted, but it's a Thursday night, and where you are, it's a Friday morning. <laughs> Yes, it's true. It's very fun. Yes, we have. I'm sure it is. Must be. Must be <laughs> hilarious when you're trying to communicate home. You know. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> exactly. So, how long have you been a drama teacher? I have been a drama teacher officially in school systems. This is year seven. Uh, so, were you unofficially? Are you an unofficial drama? Yeah, teacher? I actually, you know, as a professional actress uh, growing up, and uh, did work in our state and traveled with our state, and then. I was um, a creative director at a church and did acting classes for students outside of that. So I didn't step into formal classroom education until much later in life, but it's been very fun. So what made you want to step into the classroom? I loved what I did and I, and, and working with children, but I knew the influence for working with children would be greater if I had, you know, kind of a, a steady stream, right, of... Um, of students in classes. And I am a single parent. And so from a work perspective, teaching was something that I was passionate about already with the schedule and then working with children. And it just kind of all fit together. And I get to do what I want to do, which is drama. And so I, I love it. I absolutely love it. And how did you end up in Korea? Ah, now that is a story. Um, so my brother actually moved to Korea 20 years ago and has been in the international school scene. Um, there's quite a large community. In fact, even with our DTA community, there's many of us um, from all over the world. And so he had been over here for 20 years and called me and said, there's a job and you should apply. And I said, no, I'm super happy. And um, he's my older brother. So he kind of um, bullied me and harassed me into at least looking at it. And then I applied confident that I would never get the job and confident that we would never move. And, you know, we did. So, so we've been overseas for, um, three years now. So it's been really fun. We really felt like just the series of events that orchestrated us over here were, were pretty phenomenal and really unexpected. It wasn't something we were looking for, but I'm so glad we're here. And uh, what's the what's the makeup of the the students that you teach? Are they is it is it international? Is it American? Mm. Is it Korean? It's yeah. So it, this is an international school, but many of the Korean or the international schools here will tell you that they are ethnically mostly Korean. Um, so I would say we are probably, I think the last count was eighty percent Korean. Um, students and those students hold passports from other countries. So they have lived abroad in America or Canada. We have also Chinese and Japanese students and a strong Indian um, population. Uh, the company that's where I am is Samsung. And so, of course, as they bring in employees, their employees can then send their children to the international school. So I teach six through 12, and in our six through 12 school entirely, we're at about uh, 210 students. 
So it's a smaller school that way, but they're really amazing, amazing students, like just the kind you dream of working with, truly. Oh, that's so awesome. I was going to say, if they were mostly Korean, you must be dealing with um, English as a second language, but it kind of sounds like they're well-traveled, so maybe that's not uh, an issue where you are. Well, they are more traveled, but actually we do have an issue with English as a second language. That's something that in every step of my classroom, oftentimes when they come into the international school, this is the first time they're forced to speak in English all the time, right? So if they had lived abroad, they might have lived abroad younger. So in you know early childhood years where at home, they're speaking in their mother tongue. So coming into the school, we... English is the expected language in every class, and they quickly, I, I'm amazed at how, how quickly they learn languages. I don't have that gift. Um, so the students learn it. We struggle a lot with diction and enunciation and pronunciation. So words like years with the Y sound, they often will say ears. So instead of saying years and years, it's ears and ears. And we have to work kind of through some of those issues and how to move the mouth as an actor in this language. Um, the Korean language is very closed mouth when you speak. And of course, speaking in English is, and with theater is a very you know mouth moving language. And so it's been really interesting to see that with our students. Well, which leads us to a very interesting segue, because what we're actually going to talk about today is uh, we're doing a production case study on you uh, this fall did your good man, Charlie Brown. Yes, too. And so, oh, there's so many things to talk about with it in terms of um, just the singing of it and the, and the choosing of it and the response of it. So let's start with the choosing of it. Why did you choose this particular musical? Yeah, we, when I came to the school uh, and I started here, they had only ever done junior versions of musicals, which I think have a place for sure and are great. But I had wanted to begin developing the students working toward a you know full length production. And so last year we did a shorter musical and I knew this year we wanted to do a full length musical. So that was kind of step one was I didn't want a junior, but at the same time, I didn't want my students to jump into two and a half hours, you know, when they kind of been at a 60 minute performance level. And so it, you know, it was, what's a good transition piece. And the other challenge was the size of the cast. I felt like we had done a really big musical the year before, uh, Snow White and the uh, Prince, and that had, you know, 25 people in it, plus cast and crew. And, you know, just, it was huge for the school, for the size of the school. And I have kind of committed to do a big show and a small show. So knowing that I needed to do a smaller show that wasn't going to take them beyond what they could stretch to, I started looking at shows and I, I am a theater teacher and I do love listening to my Broadway soundtracks at home all the time. <laughs> so I, I can't help it. I do it. And um, Charlie Brown was one that I had been playing for about two years. I'm not, I don't even remember why I came across the soundtrack. I have heard of other schools doing it before, but I have never seen it. And so I don't know why I ended up with the soundtrack, but I did. And I loved it. And I shared it with our music uh, director here and asked her what she thought, if we thought we could do it. And our favorite thing that we've talked about with the show is that we, when we listened to it and we looked at it, we originally thought it was going to be so easy and <laughs> wow, those words to live by. So <laughs> um, it, it didn't end up being nearly as easy as we meant it to be for our students, but it, um, it was great. The other thing for me in consideration with every show that I pick is what um, an audience will come to. While our community, the students and staff speak English, many and most of the audience will not, or they will have limited English. And so trying to find stories that they might have seen um, or have connected to or have a frame of reference for, that was part of it. And so Charlie Brown, for a variety of reasons, fit. Um, you can go to the local uh, 7-Eleven type stores here and see Snoopy themed water bottles or juice boxes. And, you know, so they kind of have a culture um, and it, it is peanuts is over here. And so it just kind of fit. I got to say it's a, it's an, that's, that was one of my questions was, you know, would they, would, would they connect to the story? And the other thing I have to say is uh, book report is my absolute favorite song. Oh. 
of I all time. It. It's the one I, I wish I'm, I am not a singer, but if I was going to be in, in a show in a moment, I want to sing in book report. Uh, yes. I just love it. And, uh, and I've known, I've known this show since I, I actually have an original, uh, album, which shows my age Wow, uh, framed album in my, in my bathroom. Wow. It will be in my wow. bathroom. It used to be. So, how interesting. Now, I was going to ask you about your vision, but I, I'm kind of getting the impression that um, that really the vision for your for your show is growing, growing your students and, and, yeah. and growing their ability to to connect to full length musicals with the with the with the the down the road goal of of uh, of a big one. Yeah, exactly. And next year we are doing a big one. We. Um... We just got our rights to our show for next year, which is Shrek. And so you need that. That's a big show. So we're very excited. Yeah. When I, my vision for the the community, when I first got here, drama had not been done super well and everybody hated it. So step one was to get people to like drama. And then step two is to get us to do it at a level that I know these students can do it. And it's been really fun to watch that. And we wanted, you know, we wanted to entertain and I wanted to challenge the actors and challenge them a little more than I anticipated, but it was very successful and super fun to see it. Okay. So let's talk about the the process. So first response yeah. of your students, what was the first response f- about the show yeah. from them? So, you know, the, the show title is You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. And so the very first response when I put up audition notices for it, which we auditioned in the spring of the previous year. So we auditioned in May of last year. And they the very first response is, what is Charlie Brown? And who is Charlie Brown? And then when I say Snoopy, then they go, oh, does Snoopy sing? <laughs> so that was, you know, so it's a little bit of a tough sell at first for them, just because while they know the characters, they didn't, they didn't think of it as a musical. Once they, I, uh, you know, talk to different students and put out the soundtrack for them to listen to, then it was, you know, oh, I can't wait. So they were very excited um, to get into it and do it. I found that they, and again, didn't anticipate this. There was a lot of fear for actors in even auditioning because they felt like this was so challenging to them. And they, we hadn't really even gotten into really the challenge of it, but they just, it, you know, full length production and songs they didn't know and characters they didn't know. And the, the Broadway soundtrack, you know, is amazing. And they were challenged and a little fearful to even begin with. So it was kind of a slow start for, for my group. And how did you audition them? You know, I'm, I'm a meanie. So 16 bars (laughs) and a monologue. (laughs) I'm just, I mean, so they, they sign up for audition times. I have auditions every eight minutes. We use Google forms for that. They come in, they sit with me and the music director and my tech director and they do it and they leave and I give them no feedback. And then we put up the callback list and then we bring callbacks in and do vocal. There are 16 bars. They can sing whatever they'd like. With, and we make them do that um, a cappella, actually. And the piano or the music director will take them through the piano to get their range when they first audition. And then at callbacks, we put them into numbers, right? So I think, oh, you might work for Charlie Brown or, oh, you might work for Sally. So let's see how you would sound on that song. And then some, some line reading, cold reading with the uh, sides of the script. And that's and then the cast list goes up the next day. So I do it in in two days, you know, auditions, callbacks, and then the cast list is up the next day. And what was your, what was your pool like? Were you, were you happy? Were you satisfied? Were you like, oh. uh, I don't see a Charlie Brown. Yeah, this one, you know, so Snow White, we had 40 people audition and it was amazing. And so Charlie Brown, I anticipated a huge amount and we had 12. So it, no. was, it was horrifying uh, because I didn't know if we would have it, who we would have. And it was shocking. And again, that was that fear factor. And so many students said they were too scared to audition, which was shocking to me. We, I mean, the process was the same as last year's process, but the show had scared them. Of the, of the 12 that auditioned, there's six in Charlie Brown, if you just do the characters in the script, which is what I wanted to do. So of the 12, we wanted seven of them. and 
the issue became the seventh one, what to do with, it was a girl actually. Um, we had our guy parts pretty much right away. I have to say that of the 12 who auditioned, there were a couple of students that I wish had auditioned, but you know, as you pick a show, you kind of, you don't, you don't precast it, but you have, you know, you know, your pool and you know who you're thinking could play the part. And so the people I had really hoped auditioned, uh, did audition. And so that part made it easier. Uh, we did have a Charlie Brown right away. The hardest part was the Linus Snoopy because we had an actor who was great at both. And then it became with our girls, could we, we could we do a girl for Snoopy? Or And that's what we decided to do. So we had Linus and Schroeder and Charlie Brown were guys. And then we had our three girls, one being Snoopy. And our extra girl, we made the decision to create the character of Woodstock for the show and have her sing along in the general chorus parts because her voice was great. And of course, seeing the show, Woodstock belongs in the show, I think, even though it's not listed um, as a character, it should be. It's a great part. And so we made the part for the seven, crushed hopes and dreams for five, who were young and happy to come back for the next audition. So that that was good. But yeah, it was a little intimidating seeing my signups. Yeah. And what an interesting, what an experience for you to go from 40 to 12, but also to you know, maybe not this year, but maybe for Shrek that they'll come back because, because they saw maybe that hopefully that there wasn't so much to fear because, yeah. uh, because it, other was, others went through it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think everybody who didn't, um, came up, it was, it's, you know, it's, it's like that for a lot of shows, but they, they'll come up and say, you made me wish I auditioned. And that's the best thing that I can hear in Korea culturally, and I've talked to the other drama teachers here, and, and uh, it's not always, but the fear of failure, whereas in um, in America, my experience was kids would audition and tend to think higher of themselves, right? And so you'd have 60 people or, you know, everybody would audition and there just wasn't that fear factor. Here, to try for something and not get it is just a failure in their book and they just can't they just cannot get past that and so if they didn't think they could do it they wouldn't try out and that has been wild and so as we know we're doing shrek for next year i'm already having lots of conversations reminding students of how many places there are for people in Shrek. And I think we will have massive auditions for Shrek now, but uh, it's culturally something that kind of surprised me that they just, they don't want to tell their parents or their friends, I didn't make it. That's just, you don't do that here. So if you can't succeed and it's like that for sports, it's, I mean, it's across the board. They just don't try if they can't guarantee success. Wow. What an, what an interesting uh, barrier, like an interesting yes. roadblock. Um, for everybody, you know, to yeah. when we when we think about what happens in the drama in the drama classroom, when failure is something we want to encourage because we want to encourage exploration, to yeah. have that extra step of well, I'm not I'm not even going to audition because of the prospect of not getting a not getting a part. Yeah, yeah, it's wild, and I, I, you know, it's been gr I'm so thankful that I get to teach classes. Some of my partners in crime out here in Korea, you know, they, they're more the director and they don't necessarily have a lot of classes. And I think that if I didn't have classes, I couldn't at least have the conversations with students. I do miss, you know, some of my favorite things with auditions are the people who try out. And we did have one for, for the show who tried out who I had no idea. And it's, it's my favorite thing when somebody that you don't expect comes, right? And they discover something about themselves and you discover something new and the process of introducing somebody to theater and, and helping them explore a part of themselves. And our Sally, our, excuse me, our Lucy was that way. She's a senior. And I was, I was so thankful that she tried out and got to discover something and she's passionate about it. And it makes me sad for some of my students who I think miss out on parts of themselves. You know, they miss that exploration. So it's it's kind of heartbreaking at times, especially with students that I know could do it. But hopefully I keep developing that in the classroom and we have more for Shrek. We certainly, we certainly need more for Shrek. So 
Well, that's where you're going to, that's where it's going to happen. eh? it's going to happen in the classroom. Yeah. And I think you're lucky, yeah. you're really lucky that you have the, that, that intro, intro in doorway, I guess. Yeah. Uh, to sort of see if you can't shift a, shift a, shift a few feet. Um, right. You know, what an awesome, what that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a lot of, um, uh, not pressure, but, uh, that's a response. That's a great responsibility, I think to, mm-hmm. you know, just to see, see what can happen. And it, it gives a, you know what, it gives a little bit of weight to Shrek. Like it really does. Like it, like it's yeah. what a great thing to work towards. Yes. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How long did you All rehearse? Right. Yeah, so we started uh, auditions in May. We cast the show, you know, uh, we had two weeks of rehearsal in June. So we we cast like the last week of May and we had our first rehearsal by read through, sing through. And for this show, that was massive. So we did that in two weeks and just kind of reviewed things. Then the students took scripts home and were to memorize music. Ah, ah, they, 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 you know, that rarely <laughs> happens, but some do. Uh, but they were supposed to, their, their assignment was to become familiar with Peanuts and to at least know the, the melodies of the songs. Our music teacher is amazing, and um, she recorded all their parts for them individually. Um, and so the middle of July, those parts get posted for them, and they can begin singing through. So they had that at home. But when they came back, uh, only one person really knew her music inside and out. And then we rehearsed. School starts here August 9th. Uh, I think it was this year. It's August 10th. Maybe next year. It's early. Um, So we started in August and had rehearsals four days a week um, until the show in October. And we had a 10-day holiday break the uh, literally the week before the show. So... We, oh my God. Yeah. Not my favorite, but, <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, but so they, they rehearsed, uh, they rehearsed that way. They have two hours of rehearsal every day after school on the four days we're allowed to have rehearsal. This group also, we use a choreographer from the U S one of my students. So she Skypes in for choreography with us. And so we have Saturday rehearsals because she does it Friday night for her and it's Saturday morning for my students. So there were three Saturday rehearsals. They also had all right. I'd just like to uh, highlight this point. Your choreographer, you did choreography through Skype. Yes. Okay. Love it. I think that's amazing. So I'd like you to talk about that because lots of folks who will listen to this are like, oh, how do I get this? I have, I don't have anybody in my area. Now we do not advocate this for uh, stage combat in no way, shape or form, but choreography, how did that work? Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, it's my second time doing it. She did Snow White for us too. And the challenge for me is out here, um, again, my community is in the school, we speak English, but I live in, in Korea and it's communicating with a choreographer is not easy. Um, and I have, a, I had a hard time even finding it. Uh, it's just not, that's just not something that's done out here. They, the dance is I don't, you don't hear much about dance. It's kind of K-pop, which is their Korean thing. So it, it's very different. So I, I last year we didn't have it. So I contacted my student, who's an amazing young woman. She's a senior this year. And um, when I go home in the summers, I see her. And so I had asked her about it. And she said, yes. So I gave her all of the music. And we talked through the script. And I happened to be home in the summer and, and um, see her a lot. And so we talked about ideas. But really, she is a high school student that more happens over text message. So <laughs> we texted and she, you know, and if I saw something that I kind of liked, you know, I would watch something or see something I would say, hey, I want or um, give her ideas. I and this is I had not watched any again, had not watched Charlie Brown at all. Um, I didn't never seen it. And I was talking to her and I said for the blankets, I really wanted the blankets to come alive. And I, I said, you know, those dance sacks and I've seen her dance recitals and I was like that, I want that. And so then she sent me a video actually, so that I don't know if other schools have done that in our community, but there is a a YouTube video of a Charlie Brown dance in the sack. And so, but, so that's kind of how the, the conversations would work is I would have an idea and I would say it to her and I don't speak dance super well. Right. I'm like, I, you know, I want a sack and 
you know, I kind of want it to be really Broadway and some jazzy hands and maybe I'd find a clip of something, right? I, you know, I'm like, you know, like, you know, and give a me a great A couple of jazz hands, a couple <laughs> of Broadway. You just go, go do something with that. Go do something, right? Yeah. And that's how she felt, right? But that's, I mean, I can tell if I like it or I don't like it. I'm, I'm horrible that way. But so she would find videos or take videos of herself and send it to me. And I would say, yes, that's what I want. Or, or, you know, so we had an idea going in. Then when we Skype in with the cast, we set up a TV. The benefit of being here in Korea is the amazing technology that just, when I think back of, to my American school, you know, I mean, it just, it's night and day different. So we have TVs that have computers on them with cameras and you just, you know, it's a giant TV flat screen that they roll into the auditorium. And then we hook our sound through our speakers and, you know, set her up. So she gets the widest angle of our stage. And then she meets the students the first morning and they step forward and all have told her ahead of time, you know, this student can really dance that student, you know, jazz square might be a stretch. Um, and so she'll, she gets the, that and then she will tell them what she wants to do and show them. And so she essentially acts like the teacher at the front of the classroom and walks them through step by step and will stop and pause and do it again and stop and pause and do it again. And then she'll watch them and I um, will do it along with them um, to, you know, get it. She, at the end of the rehearsal, if anything has changed, she's, she makes notes and send me notes over that say things in my terminology, like, you know, you called this the chopstick step, step Becca. And I say, okay, great. So, um, we kind of use coded language for me that I know, but then the students practice it. And so we Skype with her for about six hours. Uh, she stays up really late and we get to school really early and we do as much as we can in that time. And then we stay in the afternoon beyond that six hours. We stay for another four hours and practice that to get it locked in. And then we'll do that again to finish whatever choreography up. I highly recommend it. I mean, the time difference is hard. But if you don't have choreography where you are, that has been a lifesaver for me. And my students love it. We, um, we're really excited. We're traveling to Disney World in February to compete. And they, um, she's actually going to meet us there. So they can actually meet her in person. And, you know, they've kind of created this amazing cross-continental friendship with a student who dances and is really gifted that way with students who are performers and, you know, acting and singing wise. And it's really, I mean, I just think it's amazing. So I highly recommend it. That is so awesome. What a, what a, and what a, well, I'll solve a problem, right? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So was there, as we're, 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 we're going over for our time here. So I don't want to get I'm a, sorry. Okay. Yep. Oh no, you're great. You are great. This is <laughs> awesome. Um, I don't want to take too much more of your time. Okay. So how, as you're getting to the uh, end of rehearsal, was there ever a moment of, uh, this is not going to work? You know, with this show, I, no, there really wasn't. I Now, that is unusual. So let me just say that ahead of time. But the actors that came in for this show, the seven that we had, are unlike, I think it is unlikely that I will ever have this kind of experience with a group again. I, It was a magical experience. Um, every the, Their dedication and effort was unsurpassed. I normally I'm in, I'm in production, you know, we're two weeks from our next production right now. And I'm, I have that right now, right. For my, my current one where I'm like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but this one, they just, the actors were amazing. The scariest thing for us was our Charlie Brown had tonsil issues and, um, we were concerned that he would lose his voice. And so we had some voice issues that we had to really, just watch in rehearsals, but no, these kids were, I think they could have performed it two weeks earlier. They were just, it was unreal. I, I hope every director has that experience once. That's just so magical that you're refreshed as a human being and as a creative person, it was phenomenal. Okay. And then when was the point then there must've been, cause obviously that, that this, this group gelled together. When was the yeah. point where you could see in their eyes that, that they could do it and that, that fear, it was gone. Yeah. So when we sent them home with the music for summer, they were traumatized. 
And when they came back from summer, they were still traumatized. But um, they worked the first two weeks are just music rehearsals with our music director. And there's the, the song Happiness. And my music director would say, arguably, it's the easiest song in the show. But it is a beautiful song with some lovely acapella in it and gorgeous harmony. And so she had worked that song. And I, during those two weeks, I was, you know, working set design and, you know, just in and out because it's the music rehearsal and it's not so much me at that point. So I had had not been in that rehearsal and came in for the end of it. And and she said, hey, do you want to hear it? And I said, yeah, let's let's do happiness. And they stood up and I recorded them and they sang it and I was so blown away by where they were at and they could hear it. And then I played that video back for them so they could hear it too. And I think that was the moment that they realized it didn't matter what they worried about. They could do it. And they sounded great doing it. And it's, I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a marker in, in their show. And from that point on, they didn't say I can't, or it's hard. They said, we'll get it. And literally that was the vocabulary was we'll get it. And, and they did. And it, I, I was, it was just amazing. That's awesome. Oh, there's nothing yeah. like that. Is there when, yeah. when that, when it, you can't tell them that they, it changed for them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I'm so glad you brought up doing the set. Cause I did want to talk about it too. What was your, I, what was your vision for, um, set and costumes? How did you, how did you stage this? Yeah. Um, you know, our school's got a lovely stage with no fly space, zero fly space. So, um, we have, but we have off stage. Um, and in looking at it, I thought it was going to be a challenge, but what I really wanted to do, um, I just had seen our school does an arts night, you know, where the art kind of stuff comes up. And one of the students had done some pop art and I saw it and I thought, Ooh, I think pop art and Charlie Brown makes sense. And I want to, I wanted to stay very true to a comic book feel or the comic strip feel. I didn't, I didn't want any realism, you know, no, no part of it. Did I want to feel any, any way um, natural or real? I wanted it very cartoony. So we, um, we went with the pop art was what I spoke with. I have a set designer, um, who is a student and I told him that I wanted pop art and comic strip and, Um, then I have a set, um, the artist, the graphic designer one, and we had talked about the idea of doing banners in Korea, um, and probably in the U S too, but I didn't use banners until I got to Korea. Korea uses banners. Like you would hang out in front of the school to advertise something. They use them for everything. And the idea was, how about we use banners for our backdrop since we don't have fly space. So we, um, the graphic designer created comic strip um, panels for the sides with the character faces. We got permission from Tam's Whitmark to do that. Cause you have to have permission to use the likenesses in the, for the show. And that was just on the stage. So their character faces looked like giant comic strips down the side. And we went with very bright, bright, vivid colors and everything was oversized. We used, um, styrofoam. If you don't use styrofoam, you should use styrofoam. Uh, styrofoam is the best. And so we actually built our boxes out of styrofoam and the chair, the big oversized chair for the show was entirely built out of styrofoam. And then we just put casters on it and we had a wall across the back that the students used and then created these, um, 3d pop art clouds. And I felt the whole time you just felt like you were looking at a comic and it, it was, I think it's the set that I'm the most proud of as a director. I had the least to do with, which is probably why I'm the most proud of it and why it turned out the best. Uh, Because when you can give over that creative ability, you know, to other people who can really execute it well, it was, it was really fun to see it. And my, they liked it. They had a lot of fun doing this one. You know, we do realism so much in theater. I think that it was fun to just go crazy. Uh, But it was a really simple set beyond that. I mean, we had the doghouse, the chair, the wall, and the boxes that the actors stood on. And that was it besides the banners. But it was amazing, I think. It sounds really visual. Like, you know, you don't need a big set. You don't. There's another thing, which is a good thing to just sort of put out there. It's you don't need a big set. And we've had audience reviews. uh, The Korean international school community, the drama teachers, we go see each other's shows with our students and they write reviews, sort of like Cappies in the U.S., and um, that the set was the thing that was the most talked about uh, because it was so simple. Everybody said that was 
so simple what you did, but it was brilliant. And so I encourage people to trust simple because it really does work. Oh, I think that's a lovely place to end. Trust <laughs> simple when you are, well, especially when we're talking about musicals because people get it in their heads. Like, you know, we have to copy what has come before and that <laughs> that that's not feasible for right. anybody. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Becca, this has been awesome. I've really, I've really, really enjoyed hearing your uh, experience with the show and and how you 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 took a risk and it seems like it it paid off. It, it paid off for you, eh? It just yeah, it, just it feels, did. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a it's the best experience I've probably had with theater in twenty years, and I love theater. So it's not that I've had bad experiences. I don't mean that. Just wow, it was amazing. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Becca. Before we go, let's do some theater folk news. So Becca mentioned uh, the DTA in our conversation. That's the Drama Teacher Academy, the education arm of theater folk just for drama teachers. There's professional development courses. Do you need clock hours to renew your certification? Curriculum, including a full Drama 1 and Drama 2 curriculum, plus many emergency lesson plans, resources, and the best part of DTA its community. You can participate in monthly professional learning community events with drama teachers from all over the world. Becca has been a panelist many times from Korea. And in our private Facebook group, you will never meet a more lovely, more dedicated, more ready to help group of people than our DTA members. Got a question or a struggle? They've got an answer. You just want to celebrate something? You are not alone. Find out more at dramateacheracademy.com. That's all one word, dramateacheracademy. Or click the link in the show notes, theaterfolk.com forward slash episode 208. Finally, where can you find this podcast? Go to theaterfolk.com forward slash podcast. And there you will see we are on iTunes, Android, Google Play, Stitcher, and more. That's theaterfolk.com slash podcast. And that's where we're going to end. Take care, my friends. Take care. <laughs>